Welcome to the Fantasy Source Baseball Podcast. My name is David A. Arnott, sitting here with Matt Latovsky. And as we approach the stretch run of the baseball season, uh, some of you may still be sort of in contention, whatever contention means in your league. And some of you, you may be wondering if you are in contention. And in fact, some of you, you may be trying to run away from the rest of the league and keep everyone behind you. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Matt, why don't you start off by telling us your first rule of being in contention moving forward? Well, I think the biggest thing right now, and this is no matter what type of league you play in, whether it's Roto, whether it's head-to-head, is you have to identify the categories that you need help in. Identify what you're strong in and what you need help in, and then be really aggressive about filling you know, filling in the gaps. Because if you're in a Roto League especially, you know, you know, okay, I'm, I need this many steals, I need this many runs to catch up and maybe gain a point past someone. So go after it. I mean, that's what matters right now. It's, it's great to have a bunch of decent players, guys who are good in the past, all-around type guys, but if you need a point in steals and you can get a point there, then load up on some speedsters. And on the flip side of that, if you're 75 home runs up on the next guy, you're not going to get caught. Right. You're just not going to get caught unless you completely punt the category. And even then, how far can you possibly fall? Right, exactly. So you can maybe, I mean, maybe your trade deadline is passed in a lot of leagues, but if you can still make trades, look look for that. Look for trading from a position of strength, saying I'm, I'm at a solid 10 in wins, and the next closest guy is 10 behind me. I'm okay. Maybe I can trade a pitcher who gets a lot of wins to beef up you know, uh, my offense where I need someone and, and things like that because all that matters now is the next six weeks and, and filling in, in the gaps in between the next six weeks. Right. I mean, it, we talked about it's that what have you done for me lately that matters while the uh, – that matters more now than any other time during the year. Yes, the previous rest of the season matters. What a guy has done over the rest of his career uh, previously matters – but right now, you're going for, if you're, say, in fifth place, and you have, and you determine you have a reasonable shot at, at deadening into, dead into the first division, as it were, right. or even winning the lead, you go for high-variance strategies, especially with your pickups. I mean, if D. Gordon is available out there, and you, don't, and you need steals, you should be all over that, just on the hope that he comes back and play from injury and then gets you 15 steals over the la- over two weeks or something like that. Right, exactly, and that's the way you have to do it. And in some categories, it's tough. It's tough to chase wins because you can't you can't really project wins. I mean, we see guys who win more than others, like CC Sabathia and Roy Halladay, but they're also just the best pitchers. So you, you don't see quite as many as like, hey, this guy's got 18 wins and a four and a half ERA, and he's available on my waiver wire. Yeah, I mean, if you have no if you have no innings limits, then obviously you just stack up on right. starters. But other than that. Like, even then, that's not necessarily the best way to go about it because relievers do get wins, too. Right. And, I mean, you can play matchups. You can do you can do a lot of different things, but just be smart about chasing the category that you need. And in some cases, there's only so much you can do, but you should still be proactive to do your best. Now, one of the things I mentioned just a couple seconds ago is that high-variance thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I maintain that if you're at all have a thought of going into the league, of, of going going for a championship in a non-keeper league, you just go all out. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't matter if you've got Neil Walker right now, for instance, just to take a guy who's been a fantasy stalwart, like, what, eighth best second baseman of right. the year, week in, week out, uh, just is there, you plug him in, you leave him. Now might be the chance for you to just drop him. I mean, right. if you if you can get a guy like D. Gordon to be your middle infield guy, and you need steals, forget about Neil Walker. He's only got something like seven or eight steals this year. He's not going to steal anymore. And you know what? His three or four home runs he's going to hit the rest of the year, and his two sixty, two seventy, two eighty batting average even is not going to help you. Right, and and that's exactly right. Is there's a lot of guys who are nice to have on your team throughout the course of the year in general, and you say, "This is a dependable guy." Kind of what you're saying with Walker. This guy's dependable. He hits two eight. He hits a homer, uh, homer or two every every week or two, and he's just a nice guy. But overall, they only do so much when you need specific stats. I think Alberto Callaspo is one of those guys <laughs> who you just need to look at and say, "Nah, not getting it done." I might take a hit in batting average by dropping him and picking up someone else. 
but that's what I have to do because especially in those percentage categories, your ERA, your whip, your batting average, there's only so much movement that's going to happen between now and the end of the year. So, you know, you can play around with those a little more and just go after those counting stats, get strikeouts, get RBIs, get whatever, or, or at least go for them. Now, not to turn this too much into mismanners, mm -hmm. but what advice do you give to the people that are pretty much out of it at this point? I, well, mean, I mean, at this stage, you might not necessarily be out of it, even if you're in last place in your 12-team place lead, in your right. 12 point, uh, team lead, but... There are people that are out of it right now. Right. What do you tell them? I would say to those people, keep setting your lineups. I mean, definitely do that. You don't just want to be the dead team because that's no fun for anyone. Right. If you've had Brian McCann in your lineup the entire time he was on the DL, you're not helping anyone. Right. And I think, you know, especially in Roto Leagues where you might be in 12th overall, but you could be in 6th mm -hmm. in whip, and that could mean the difference, you know, maybe someone jumping you or whatever – that could affect the higher uh, the well, higher tier of the standings. Head-to-head head -head leads if you're giving free wins to other teams. Right. That matters too. Absolutely. So set your lineups, still try. But, it, you know, you don't probably don't need to be as aggressive. There is a certain point where you, 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 to a certain extent, step aside and say, all right, I'm not going to, you know, do this or do that. Uh, but for the most, you know, play it out. I mean, go all out because it, it will, um, you know, it, what you do can affect other people in the league at the top of the at the top of the standings. It occurs to me that there is a, a cross sport analogy that makes total sense. Right. When you're in 40th place in a NASCAR race mm -hmm. and it's 10 laps to go, you keep playing in case there's a major pile up right. up front. You keep driving. But you move aside when the leaders start to lap you. Right. You don't. Yeah. You don't. You don't. You don't get aggressive and start doing hair. <laughs> you got trading paint. <laughs> right. I mean, we had someone in a league I'm in. He's made five roster moves all year. All year. But he, yes, and he one of his <laughs> roster moves was recently used his waiver claim on Jose Altuve. <laughs> And it's like, what are you doing? You don't. You're 12th place. You clearly don't care about the league. Why are you doing that? That's the kind of thing where, again, I, I guess I can't be too mad at him for trying. Right. But at the same point, at, at the same time, it's kind of like, well, maybe you didn't need to do that. Okay, so to sum up, yes. if, you're in the, if you're in contention, don't be afraid to go all out. Right. Obviously, if you're a keeper lead, there are some constraints there. Yes. But you know what? If, this is, if you're a redraft lead, what's the penalty for doing worse because you went all out take that risk right yeah be a compiler it's it's not pretty but at the end of the day it only matters to win all right matt thanks for joining us all right.